All right, welcome back to the Kingsway Podcast. Hopefully you turned into part one of uh, this movie part journey. This is part duh. Duh. <laughs> duh. Um, if you have not, I have not. Oh, I Charlie Sheen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if you have not watched part one, I highly encourage you to go back and check that out in our YouTube catalog and uh, check that out. I know that um, this is the first time that we walked through our top 10 list of best movies, personal best. Personal. I want to make sure you make that. Uh, there's a little stipulations. You can only have one series in your top 10. Um, and so it's series of movies or collection or trilogy. Um, if not, then you have to mention the specific movie out of the trilogy that you <laughs> like. That way we kind of keep it from just being like all the trilogies and all the series of movies. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. that's easiest to, to do. Um, so, uh, we've gone through our top six. If you've watched part one, we're not going to recap those. Uh, you can go back and rewatch, but if, our bottom six, our bottom six. Yeah. I'm sorry. We haven't gotten to our top four. That's right. Um, but we've gone 10 through six or 10 through five at this point. So what I want to do before we move on, cause I think what happens when anytime you go top 10 or you try to make a list like this is you have the, what abouts, like, what about this one? Mm -hmm. or what about that one? Or maybe someone even mentioned like Jed mentioned La La Land in his, and I immediately was like, we I didn't know completely <laughs> forgot. La La Land. And that's one that I I really, really like because of the ending that we talked about in some of that stuff. Uh, another one that I that I, I mentioned, but I, the Indiana Jones movies, The Return of the mm -hmm. Lost Ark. Like, Last Crusade. The, the Return of the Lost Ark is just the one that was very similar like The Matrix in the sense yeah. of like yeah. introducing me to a genre of action movies. And then Blade Runner 2049. Um, just that style of movie and i know it was just beautiful i saw it in imax and the special effects in that with this kind of ai girlfriend thing it was so it felt like i was watching the future like it was weird it was trippy in imax the, but that's not an experience that i feel like you can duplicate at home and so yeah, right. it, didn't, it didn't make my list because i'm like yeah imax is a very different experience yeah. Because um, I just watched it at home on yeah. TV, and I didn't like it. He didn't watch it, but see, I I have no desire. I didn't to finish it. Well, I have no desire to rewatch it. Would be yeah, in the theater. Yeah, and yeah. So I could um, see that Ryan Gosling walking through the sand in some of those larger buildings in mm -hmm. the IMAX. It felt like you. Were, I mean, it was crazy in IMAX. Um, anyway, but those are those are a couple that I was thinking, like the Indiana Jones one and the La La Land, and specifically were the two that I was like, gosh, I wish. Those made you know my list, and I was thinking about those, but they didn't. So, yeah. Any other thoughts before we move on and fight about the things that I'm sure we will not all agree on in our top four? Yeah, one of my honorable mentions was probably the Goonies. I don't think that was going to make top ten, but it's definitely up there. And like, why? Why was it? Why was it something that you're just, thinking about now? Well, as I was studying there, I, I totally forgot about it, and I was like, man, that was that was one of those like adventure movies yeah. like that I watched. Looking back, like watching that as a kid, it's probably not the best kid movie, but <laughs> watching it as an adult, like uh, just like, you know, the way that was directed to Steven Spiller, kids at their house, like oh, coming to their house yeah. and knocking on their front door, like just what you mentioned, Super adventure. 8. Super 8 is kind of a modern day yeah. Goonies. And, but it's yeah, almost like how you would like yeah. play as a kid, mm -hmm. like come to life. Yeah. You, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like sure. you would play those yeah. scenarios out as a kid, like finding treasure yes. and going on adventure through caves in your backyard. Mm -hmm. And these kids like lived it yeah. out. So getting to watch that in a movie, you're like, this is what I've <laughs> yeah. been dreaming yeah. of. And, and yeah. I feel like, and I've told you this, everything. like that, that, that movie has a special nostalgia to me. Cause I've worked at the YMC after school program yeah. and I played that movie for <laughs> first through fourth graders, <laughs> not realizing that PG, the rating system had in changed <laughs> quite a bit. And that yeah. there were certain words that were very common and certain body parts that were played with on statues yeah. that uh, got, but got me in big trouble, <laughs> got me written up. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that movie, even then, like, I'm like, I realize it's not a kid movie, but I, did watch it i, I read like the water library because i was homeschooled so we had to oh, go rent so good. <laughs> before blockbuster <laughs> you know like it was, it was crazy. like the scene at the end when they go into the cave and the pirate ships and they oh, yeah, all dude. slide in oh yeah, yeah. Water slide hey, like, you guys. <laughs> like you i wanted to be in there i yeah, wanted dude, to like yeah. go into those sure. water slides. that's the great wolf lodge now man yeah so, pretty <laughs> much pretty much as an adult as close as you can get <laughs> all right so starting in the top four realizing um, that we're probably going to need to have some discussions through this and that we might overlap our lists a little bit more yeah, at the top four. Um, I don't know. Evidently, probably not. And we'll never agree on anything. Nope. Um, let's start, uh, Jed, let's start with you and your top okay. four. What is, what is your it. top four? What is the, the fourth best <laughs> movie in your arsenal? Uh, I went with 
The Prestige. Mm. 2006. Christopher Classic. Nolan. Classic. That's the Nolan thing I, you were holding on to. Right? It was, yeah. Um, I almost went with Inception. Ball, um, the only reason Inception almost won is because that's Nolan's uh, original idea. Like he, the Prestige is based on a book. Great book too. If you haven't read, I haven't it. read it. Very good. Um, but it's significantly different. Um, so Prestige, two magicians, one very charismatic Hugh Jackman, yep. very charismatic. Yep. Great stage show, presence. Man. Not very actually talented at illusions yeah, or, like or magician. David Copperfield. Yeah. Guy. yeah. Uh, then you have Christopher, not Christopher, no, Christian Bale. Um, and he is super talented, Extremely sleight of talented. hand. Mm-hmm. You know, very, very good. Not a good, like, not a nice not guy. Not a good showman. Not, uh, a, good not guy. a charismatic person at all. And so uh, Hugh Jackman's trying to learn how Christian Bale does these things. And like, he has this one trick uh, where he has a little. Red rubber ball. Red ball, man. And he'll, he's bouncing it, and he, he'll throw it uh, to the other end of the stage. Jump in like this uh, a cabinet, like a... Mm-hmm. What's the word? W- wardrobe. Like jump wardrobe. in a wardrobe, and then there's an ex- uh, identical wardrobe on the under, other end of the stage. He pops out of the other one and catches the red ball. You Jackman wants that trick. And so he mm-hmm. goes and <laughs> meets Nikola Tesla, who builds him this machine. I don't know. It's... The twist in that movie, I literally, the first time I watched that movie, I immediately started over and watched it again. Yeah, because you had to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it felt. It, it, you know, it's a good movie. Very much so. Like, I got yeah. six, The Sixth Sense didn't make it on this list, obviously, for any of yeah. us. But very oh, much yeah. so, like, the, ulti- the ultimate twist yeah. Yeah. type thing. And, and I would say this. If you haven't seen that movie, stop listening to this right now. And just go watch, go it. watch it. Go watch it. Because I, I agree it's so with you. Good. It's so good. Don't spoil it. No. Like, go watch no, the I'm, movie. That's the one I'm not. I'm holding on to that spoiler. And it is. Uh, that is a fantastic mm-hmm. choice. Didn't make my list, but I cannot disagree with that. That's one of those yeah, that I haven't rewatched and I don't go after to look at it, but I remember it. Mm-hmm. And when you admit it, you're like, yeah, that was, that was a great, great movie. It's like weirdly like contained for, mm-hmm. for uh, Chris, uh, Christopher Nolan. It is. Like. But good storytelling. So good. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 The way he jumps back and forth between so a little bit of future and and a little bit of a little bit of past. Oh, and the like, script yeah. and, the, and the the shots in the movie are very oh like, it's gorgeous. Very well. Very well. Hugh shot. Jackman goes to Colorado for a little bit. Well, I'm just it's I just wow, love wonderful. the the framing. Uh, yeah, we could go into the technical. Side oh yeah, of that, but the framing of, of Christian Rollins. Like it, 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 he's he, right in the middle of yeah, his, his best cinematography. Work. Mm-hmm. I don't know the name of the man who does his cinematography, but. He give him some incredible Oscars, incredible please. work, and the screenplay is 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 part of that. Yeah, the story is just really amplified yeah. by the screenplay, uh, and the music is good too. <laughs> All the things that make a great Christopher Nolan movie. <laughs> yeah. All right, John. All right. So number four was the movie that I got hyped about. I got worked up. It was the build up, and it was between this movie and then the first Iron Man. But it's the Avengers, mm. the original. The first Avengers. Mm-hmm. I, that was a movie that had. I'm always angry. Built up <laughs> since literally the first MCU movie. Oh yeah, and the work up to that, Dude. and then finally delivering. Oh like, yeah, I felt like it. It did its job. That was an experience, man. It was like to to wait that long to see a movie. I've never had that other than probably Lord of the Rings. Like yeah. knowing that that movie was coming and having to wait years between mm-hmm. movies and just the anticipation. Like that was the first time since that that I felt anticipation to see a movie, and then actually enjoying it the way I did. Like went out and I don't buy it movies. Went out and bought the movies. <laughs> delivered. And so Iron Man was like that's one of my honorable mentions. I didn't want to mention it until I mentioned this movie because of that. Because like that's the movie that got me hyped for MCU movies. Mm-hmm. And then so after Iron Man, like I was just I was so You're all in. I was all in. Yep. I wanted to see them all. And then knowing that Avengers was coming, like they're all going to be together. I can't disagree with that. I yeah. think the Avengers movies, the Avengers movies are fantastic. That's definitely, mm-hmm. as a whole, I think that definitely is the movie that had the most emotional side of it. I think yeah. the movie that I think is the best made 
is Winter Soldier. Like I don't think there's I'd any I don't yeah. think there's any debate in that. But I think as a story See, that's the, probably my number three is yeah. Winter Soldier. Well, I just I mean this though, like I get why the storyline in the Avengers is better, I think, than the Winter Soldier. I think Winter Soldier is just better made. Like yeah. I just really enjoy Winter Soldier. Great action. Yeah. Oh well, just some of the scenes and the way they chose to do that movie. But again, that, that's not the debate here. I don't disagree with what you're saying. Yeah. 2012 is probably right. Yeah, 2012. 2012. It was it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it was right at the major hype of those well, it movies. It hadn't been yeah. overdone yet. Yeah. And we weren't intoxicated to the point of like drowning. Um, and on top of that, we had never seen that many high profile actors and actresses mm-hmm. play mm-hmm. large roles. And then all in the, like we hadn't seen that yet. Yep. And so I, I think that was a first, like the matrix is what it feels like to me. It's like, I don't know if the matrix is the best version of like that style of like sci-fi action, but it was the first to do some of that stuff. And right. I feel like hopefully in the future here, we're going to have some movies that change, you know, and take that to the next level too. Right. Um, so I agree with that. Um, my number four is going to be probably the most controversial on here, and they're probably going to get really angry at me. We're getting high. Now, um, so. so I'm still not over the last. Sentence. I know uh, number four. Is, <laughs> we're going to talk about that. Number four <laughs> is the Harry Potter series, and uh, that actually is low for Lord of the Rings. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. See, that's why. Uh, there are like three good movies in that whole so, series. Uh, Harry, like movies, <laughs> Harry, <laughs> the Harry Potter series does not include the Fantastic Beasts, and I'm not including those in that. So at you're all. calling that your series for the yes. Movie. So that's my one series. Um, I enjoyed uh, definitely the ending. Last two, uh, the whole series is is, is fantastic. The reason that's that I false. the re- <laughs> the reason I can't put the series higher, and the reason why I didn't pick a specific film is because they break up the last book and if they didn't break up the last book i would definitely choose that one what mm-hmm. is that um what they go together in my opinion they're they, part one they and part do. two they so do. you can you i mean okay. you can say deathly hollows is your favorite deathly hollows is the best yeah. um it's by far i think though the reason why they broke it up and why it's my favorite and why i'm glad they did is the best represented book of yeah. all of them and it is you're a huge fan of the books i am and the why, books are incredible why i think why i think i've never ish. seen a series like it and this is what i want um frodo and sam wise through three movies are the and i would say vigo mortensen are some of the best casting choices of all time and i think the harry potter kids are by far the best casting choices that they had to make over the course of that long of a time they're kids. They're 10 and 12, 14 years old when they're picked. And then at the and I think in the Deathly Hollows, they are highly capable actors. And they couldn't have They're known. highly capable actors at in, their in, in at the those roles. roles. In those roles. I agree. None I agree. of them are good at anything else. I agree. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe. I, I haven't I, seen him now, to be uh, fair. I, I've seen him in like one or two other things. He wasn't very good. I think Daniel Radcliffe. Did he do some good. like stints And on then Broadway what's your face? Remind me, whatever. Just did uh, um, um, pretty, or not women. No, little women. Say, little women. And she did fantastic. She that. did okay. In that. uh, so so here's, here's the thing I'll say. Here's the thing I'd say. I, I just think what those characters did has never been done from children acting into the thing in any yeah. other series. And so with that, it brings a certain amount of character attachment mm-hmm. that I've never experienced in film before. That's where like, the build up in the last done two in television a lot. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing. You'll see that kind of go through like a series. You'll see just grow yeah. up. Just the like that epicness happen. of it though is just another that. level. And I feel like Daniel Radcliffe, even if it's his only film he ever does, that's like the film series that's well, he'll it always was, be here. It was probably. a yeah. it was so well done. It wasn't just because the nostalgia. I really felt like he encapsulated the character through the books, even. So because of that, I know it's debatable. I, I don't I don't think everybody will agree with that. I definitely have a bias because I've read through the series so many times. I definitely do. I do not love everything about the series. It yeah. would be higher if they included love and the selfless love that's a part of the books and yeah. that they included that sacrificial love. See, it's, I've read the books, I think, five times, mm-hmm. the whole series. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. and I've read it more, but I don't want to be like, yeah, no, 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 like, no, I understand. But I'm just saying, walked on the moon. I'm just saying that like, <laughs> like you can, and I, I love the, the books, but my point here is that like, you can love the books. I don't and like all the movies. Like the films. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. the third one's pretty good. The fourth one is the fourth and fifth are okay at best. Mm-hmm. And then six, seven and eight are very, very good. Yeah. But See, I don't like I don't like the Half Blood Prince very much at all, and like a lot of people do. See, I think that one 
after Deathly Hollows is the best represented book. I agree. I agree. I just didn't like the book as much either. Like yeah, that's it's up saying. there it's for just me. Not, it's just not my favorite. But that's I think that's why. But that's an that's an arc of redemption, mm-hmm. and yeah. you attach yourself to <laughs> redemption stories a lot. And so I'm like, I get so that. Harry <laughs> Potter. None of those made your list. None of them made my yeah, list. I no, they didn't make my list. No, either. I didn't take it. That's why I said yeah. it's the most controversial. It's in my top five. Yeah. I can't like, believe you think it wasn't. I, I I think she was Hermione because she was cast so young, and then I uh-huh. don't think she's good. I think they're going to struggle to break out. I do think they're going to yeah. struggle to break out. I was thinking of like, because I saw that the Circle movie she was in with Tom Hanks. Is Beauty and the Not Beast, a good dude. movie. She, she had no business being Belle. She yeah. cannot yeah. sing. Why no. They cast her because she's Emma Watson. And that made me mad. And I may be overstepping <laughs> to say that they're going to be great actors and actresses. I just, I was so impressed by how well they grew. I just was. Yeah. In, the, in their characters. And I watched the movies before the books. And most of the time, I like Dumbledore is a perfect example. They did not do well, Dumbledore. No, nope. they ruined him. It's true. And I got really mad about that. And I'm still mad about it. But he died. So I can't be mad that, oh, gosh, I'm not going to yeah. remember his name. The Michael Rich- Gambon's uh, the second one. The second I don't one. Remember the first one. Hey, anyway, they, he died in the second, after the second film. And yeah. It just mm-hmm. ruined it. And so, you know, I, I just think there's there's a part of that that makes it so special. Okay. We got to, we got to, yeah. Going. Yeah. Uh, number yeah, three, yeah. I'll just, just yeah, say this uh, just so we can keep moving ahead. Uh, number three is The Remnant. Uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio, one of the most beautiful movies ever shot. One, some of the longest, uh, sh- um, cons- uh, one of some of the longest, never-ending shots shot in film, um, and some of the most crazy background to the story. You know, sub sub <laughs> sub uh, minus temperatures that they're filming in. Just the background of that whole. I, I love the movie. It is not a movie for everyone. It's an extremely yeah. slow movie. Yeah, I it's thought it was very boring. violent. I very didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it is it is my style of movie. I have watched it multiple times. I only have one movie downloaded on my phone, and that is it. And so it's one of those movies that I will watch the first 20 minutes and then go, that was beautiful. And then pick up and watch the next 20 minutes um as far as screenplay and i photo- uh, uh cinematography i don't know if i don't know if there's a better movie uh when it comes to nature shots and larger things last of the mohicans is the only thing that comes close and it did not make my list uh the remnant be- beat it out because i couldn't have two of those same style of movies um but it feels like the modern version is what it feels like it's just a better version of that music's beautiful uh, scenes are beautiful and the bear attack is incredibly brutal. intense and yeah. brutal and it's yeah. somewhat real story, not mm. not completely. But. Give us number two, and yeah. then you do your. I have number three. If you have three and two, my mm. we already know my two is the Dark Knight. I said that earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have the three, but just real quick, hit two, kind I'll of run through three. three and two, mm-hmm. and then I'll say my three, and then spend a minute on my one. Okay, number number two for me is the Last Samurai. <laughs> That the was Last one. Samurai. Uh-huh. <laughs> number two is the Last Samurai. Tom Cruise. I've said this before on the podcast. Uh, it, it got beaten out by one film that I, I'm excited to talk about because I do think it's probably my favorite genre of films. Um, that when I when I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. I don't know why I thought it was anything different. I think I was in denial. The Last Samurai is a beautiful movie. It is the same things that I've just said. Great characters, great development, a little bit of history built in with incredible music, cinematography, character development, real life. Uh, and it's got ninjas and samurais in it. So, uh, <laughs> I feel like that made your argument. More valid. Uh, I can't argue with that. It's, I'm <laughs> it's fair. I, I get it, it. It's really cool. There, there's just poems in it. There's, there's, uh, you know, redemption of characters. There's culture. I mean, I just feel like I learn more and more every time I watch it. I, I love it. I like it. Yeah, I watched it once a long time ago, and I don't think I've rewatched it like mm-hmm. as an adult. Both Remnant and Last Samurai are over two and a half hours, yeah. so anytime you know, so like I, I get yeah. why those aren't rewatchable movies when you're like, oh, I got, I got an hour and a half. I guess I'll yeah. just pop in this movie and watch it over the next week. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's number two for right. you? Number three. He has oh, three. Yeah, three. he has three and two. Number three for me is Jurassic Park. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's like a film school and shooting skill, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. storytelling, uh, groundbreaking effects. Uh, just Velociraptors, Velociraptors, dude, yeah, factors. Jeeps chase scenes, like uh, epic sets, things that you know, Steven Spielberg. Um, that was definitely one of the first movies that I like screamed out loud, yeah. As a like, kid, I my parents took me, we watched it in the theater, loved it in the theater, 
when I went to bed that night, I swore T-Rex was outside my window <laughs> and I didn't sleep for like a month. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. I definitely screamed like when they were getting attacked in that like tree. Yeah. by the Tronosaurus Rex and like it was breaking like that like I'm afraid of heights so one yeah. and then B like I'm so like intense. a dinosaur is chasing me out of a tree I don't know what I do like, yeah. I'm like just eat me like, <laughs> so I, I love get that, that movie I it's got that. everything it's got you yeah. know tense moments funny moments just you know, mm-hmm. awe epic you know yep. when they Newman. reveal Something when they small. reveal the dinosaurs that's one of my favorite scenes like mm-hmm. yeah. you know they get in the jeep takes his glasses oh, off yeah. mm-hmm. and then like they scale up to the top of the brontosaurus oh, yeah. and it's just like but it was Dude, pretty, no, that's great. I that's can't great. disagree with that. Yeah. So, and Remember, that's a movie I've watched so many times. I think I've even watched it maybe a couple times this year already. Yeah. And so I, I we rewatched that. My wife loves it. It's one of her favorites. And that's and that that's what makes it even more fun is when when yeah. you have somebody in your life that loves it too. Oh yeah. What's number two? So number two for me is uh, the series that I'm picking, and so it's Star Wars. Okay. Mm. So Star Wars is number two for me, like. The original, mm-hmm. uh, original Star Wars, so New Hope and uh, all them. So it's, yeah, it's Star Wars. Like, yeah. I mean, Star Wars didn't make my list. I neither. Really? So Star Wars didn't make I'm, my list. I'm a Star Wars fan. I've loved this. No, since I was a kid. I, I, it was. It's one of those. Like, I can't two. disagree with what you're saying yeah. just by all the numbers. I mean, it's both. Both of those for me are similar in that, like Jurassic Park and Star Wars. When I watched them, I have mad respect for the filmmaking yeah. and like mm-hmm. what they did at the yep. time with what they had. Yeah, they don't hold up for me. They don't yep. hold up for you. I, 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 I can I enjoyed them the yeah. first time I watched. And I don't them, watch and I, the, like, Star Wars. I don't even watch necessarily for like the epic, like like groundbreaking model scenes. Or, yeah, you know, yeah, with the Millennium Falcon or whatever. It's just like the story between you know the characters, like oh, no, Luke sure. and Hans, and just. The whole, the whole, what is Star Wars? I mean, if I can be 100%, Indiana yeah. Jones beat Star Wars out, and then Indiana Jones lost. Like, that. that's what happened. Like, I was like, Spielberg, yeah. Jurassic Park, like, those that got beat out by Indiana Jones, and then Indiana Jones didn't make the list. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I literally had to go that route. Because right. I was like, I like, that is, like, Star Wars, Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones, like, that's all the same right. 80s, kind of, 90s, you know, like, oh, my gosh, right. I love this. And then I was like, Ugh. And it's the same thing. I was like, I can't do it. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I can't do it. I can do Star Wars. Though. I've, <laughs> no, I've enjoyed and it. There are a ton of people that are watching right now. They're going to hear you, and you go, "Finally, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. a movie that I like." <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's, 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 like I said, I'm going to I'm going to represent the ninety percent. No, <laughs> your, your day, you know, you know, Empire Strikes Back is by far, yeah, I think, Empire the best. I, and I would that if, was if when I had was on going there. to make my list. That's, is that your favorite? That was my favorite. Yeah, on there. Yep. that's the one that I would have put on there. All right, Jed. All right. I have number three. Uh, I'll remind my number two was The Dark Knight. Yeah. So I won't Which talk about that. Which we agreed was a good choice. Yeah. And I, 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 yeah, I, yeah. My number three uh, is Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Oh, <laughs> music, bro. You just love some music. Brett has calories. Brett, I love, <laughs> Brett makes you fat. fat. <laughs> I love that movie. Oh, oh God, so dude. funny. I love it. But then. Dude. I do that opening where uh-huh. they're playing that pop song uh-huh. not the, or the punk song for the first time. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Um, the color, just the like everything. the underrated humor of that. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> me garlic bread. <laughs> Jumps out the window. And like, I oh, could eat garlic bread for every day for every meal for the rest of my life. <laughs> bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat. <laughs> so good. <laughs> and like just the whole like. I don't know. It's just so like the final fight whenever uh-huh. his like shadow, <laughs> <laughs> but just like all of the just like subtle references. I like Edgar Wright directed that. Hey, the way he give an explanation. Like what okay, is yeah, yeah, Scott Pilgrim a battle. Right? Scott Pilgrim versus the world is it's based on a uh, on a graphic novel, a series of graphic novels. Have you seen it? Um, yes, I've seen it once. It's okay. like it's like. If they made a video game a movie, but did it well, yep. um, he fights people. When he defeats them, they explode into coins. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, it's ridiculous. But basically, the plot is he wants to date this girl, and before he can date the girl, he has to defeat her seven evil exes. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's the whole plot, and it's <laughs> and, and it's it, ridiculous. It feels like a Mario slash like Street Fighter slash like he gets a a one up in the middle yep. of the movie. Mm-hmm. Like he gets an extra life. <laughs> like. like <laughs> Gets defeated, you get the one up bonus, and then boom. But on yep. top of all just like this craziness, like it is stupid, well made. Like mm-hmm. if you like pay attention to some of the transitions between scenes, the way that Edgar Wright uses color or like hides these video game references in the scenes and like Oh, it's beautiful. Like, it if you if movie. you watch 
you know, as say, as he's going up to his third fight with the third evil X, there'll just be threes hidden all over the place and in the scenes and you just watch them and and know, like he just points exactly what he's doing. Like through the whole thing. It's just hilarious. That's a brilliantly Jed choice. It is. Oh, I, I really, I really like that because, like, in my mind, I'm going like, "Where are you? What direction are you going to go?" I honestly, I would be. I thought it was going to be Inception. That's what I thought it was going to be. Inception didn't make it, but only because I didn't want a million Christopher, Christopher Nolan, Nolan movies. movies. On this I really thought it was going to be another. Like, I was like, "Ah, it's Inception." That's what I thought. So are no. we only left with number one. We're only left with number ones. So here's what I think we should do. Okay. John and I have already referenced our number ones in the last episode. That's true. Yes. So I think you and I will just real quick just yep. say what, yep. what they are, mm-hmm. just as a reminder. And then Trevor, you'll say what yours is. Uh-huh. And you can have a minute to talk about it. Uh-huh. And then John and I will rip you apart. Okay. That sounds perfect. Great. I'm super I'm ready. ready for this. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So John, what was your number one? So uh, Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. Return of the King. And my number one was the Lord of the Rings series so that was with the, the series. two towers yeah, as your as my as my main dog. pick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, unlike what Trevor was wrong about, yeah, I feel like the films hold up. <laughs> hold on, hold on. We'll rip him apart in a second. We want to hear what his number oh, okay, one is yeah, first. Okay. I'm sorry. What's your number uh, one, Trevor? <laughs> Proceed, Trevor. <laughs> my my number one movie is Saving Private Ryan. And uh, okay, I great. Like- now I'm. Gonna- <laughs> <laughs> <Get up. laughs> Uh, it is Saving Private Ryan, and the reason it is, I love historical, accurate, well done movies. 1917 is a fantastic example so of a modern day one. Mm-hmm. Um, Dunkirk, but probably. Dunkirk, I wanted to put Band of Brothers, mm-hmm. but that's a TV series, so yeah. keeping that out of that, I would say that has more of a place at number one with Saving Private Ryan. When I watch Saving Private Ryan, I can't help but be just pulled into the scenes. Yeah, I just can't help it. It's well acted, well written. Um, it is so it's the greatest generation in some ways just being them and so would you say you like the older style war movies like kind of world war movies or do you uh, like I, even I, vietnam or even modern war so films? like any anything like i why i like, war like black movies. hawk down black so. hawk down's okay the thing i like is accurate portrayals of history and when you see like when they showed saving private ryan mm-hmm. to war veterans and then they had ptsd in the theater and they mm-hmm. had to leave uh, you know they got something right in the mm-hmm. sense of like portraying what it was really like to storm Normandy or to walk through some of these places like, um, uh, you know, like they had to in in Eastern Europe, yeah. Western Europe. Uh, that's why I really enjoy Band of Brothers because they interview some of the people. Anyway, mm-hmm. Saving Private Ryan has that Done. thing in the middle of the story where I feel like it just it just makes you. It does what a Done. movie is supposed to do. It's great. So. It's great. Yeah. Uh, I know we kind of have to jump off here pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Um, so, John. Take two or three minutes. Yep. Tell Trevor why he's wrong. Okay. I'll take my turn after that. Just so you know done. why they're saying this, because <laughs> I picked Lord of the Rings in number at number five, five as the Fellowship and of said the it Ring. didn't hold up. And then I said oh, no. things like the truth, and then they got mad. <laughs> so here's here's my backstory with with these films. Um, high school had an English teacher that was obsessed. Mm-hmm. Uh, we studied the books like yep, you know insanely deeper than probably most high school students would study those books or should have to or should have to exactly <laughs> take it back um, <laughs> and so uh i love Tolkien. movies weren't out at that time but then like right after that the, the you know word came out so they're then making you loved it. your teacher <laughs> well it's gonna be all time well and you kind of you know you spend that much time with book, those books then you begin to really appreciate them mm-hmm. and enjoy them and um i'm talking like english room was like covered with memorabilia yeah. and and different things um anyways uh movies came out like lines were long i was happy to wait like that was the first time like the epic like midnight I, release exactly i was yeah. ready to be there yeah. and the doors and opened. i was at every midnight release yeah well. i remember standing in lines just being and then when those movies ended like when fellowship ended mm. and they're floating off and whenever it's just like you just could not wait and all you would think is like it's one to two years i gotta wait like it's gonna take yeah. forever for the and just the anticipation and then when each movie like would hit like never failed like i bought the dvds as soon as they came out have rewatched them a yeah. jillion times and i have the extended Love editions every, as yeah, well yes. and i've seen yeah and so they have just you know they they did the books justice they mm-hmm. were filmed insanely well they were acted mm-hmm. out like it ticks every box the if casting I'm going is to judge fantastic a movie, yes mm-hmm. every box is ticked and uh 
that's why it's my number one. Yeah. So I I read and watch Lord of the Rings once a year, every year. I, I have say, for like I, the last five years, I and think. And have you read yeah. the Silmarillion? Have you read I that? have read the Silmarillion. Oh, Silmarillion. Um, which, if you don't know, it. is is the it's super like, nerdy, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, encyclopedia is a good word. Encyclopedia it's a encyclopedia of, encyclopedia of all the background and stories and um, characters and developments. Yep. It's, I mean, a Tolkien created not just a trilogy in The Hobbit. He created a world with a history and languages and all this. And so, I mean, everyone knows that. I'm not going to talk about that. But I love Lord of the Rings. And The Return of the King was the first movie I remember seeing in theater. Ooh. Um, it's got it some like pull. Six. It's yeah. got some pull. <laughs> um, I'm going to leave it with That's an one movie for a six year old. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is it was also the movie, the first Lord of the Rings movie that my older sister Malia was allowed yeah. to, allowed to watch in theater. And they, my, my parents made it seem like they were going to drop me off at the babysitters until we got there. And then they're like, ah, oh, Jed, you can come with us. Uh, like, Malia uh, still holds that tune uh, <laughs> against me to this day. Sorry, <laughs> Malia. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there's one scene in the two towers that elevates it above anything else okay. and makes this trilogy hold up to me. So in the book, a lot of things happen. Mm-hmm. Basically, which I've read the two towers. The people of Rohan, you know, they're going to Helm's Deep mm-hmm. to find some find some shelter. Um, when you first meet the people of Rohan, King Theoden's kind of got mind controlled and stuff. He sent his nephew. Mm-hmm. Uh, he kind of banished him. Um, in the book, though, immediately when when he's kind of restored back into health, he brings his nephew back in. They're all good. Yeah. Right, and then he goes to Helm's Deep with him. In the movie, he sends him off. And Gandalf has to leave to go find Aramir and bring him back to help. And there's this epic moment when everyone thinks they're about to die. Yep. Uh, King Theoden and Aragorn are storming out of the breach in Helm's Deep. And mm-hmm. you know, everyone just thinks they're dead and they're yep. just making one, yep. last stand. one last stand. They look up at dawn. There's Gandalf at mm-hmm. the top of this hill. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he says, King Theoden stands alone. And then here comes Aramir <laughs> behind him. He says, not alone. Not alone. <laughs> goes for and all these horses yeah, come up yeah, behind him and they yeah. make this charge down the hill yeah, yeah. oh my god i just got chills just talking about it it's so good and there are just so many moments like i mean there are things in the return of the king yeah when uh aragorn gets the sword yeah oh, it's yeah, restored dude. in that that yep. is just like i hold you oh my fulfilled. gosh uh-huh. like they're just i think those are the two main things that peter jackson changed that work Better in the movies than they did in the books. So just to give Which you usually hope, doesn't happen. Doesn't just, happen. Just yeah. to give you hope that I am not a hater, and that I love you guys. It made your list. All right. Um, I I literally made a music video with a Switchfoot song called "Dare to Move," where I literally took the scene from Helm's Deep you are describing and overlaid the song so that when "Dare You to Move" starts, it is when the charge happens and they come down the hill and they just start ripping the orcs to part and it's just the whole thing was timed out perfectly i think i like you less because of that <laughs> i'm just saying and it was it was freaking awesome and i remember i like i can't got, believe you put switch foot on i Lord thought of the it was the coolest thing ever and i was like 12 i showed it to my parents and they are like eh. like, like you just did and i like it was so cool so cool to me um i think we have to be done we do yeah. we do so here's here's the fun thing about what we just did this is 10 movies it's our own thing i think it's a personality test like we said yeah, more than anything it kind of shows where we're all at i love that it's kind of like you can love movies for the entertainment it can draw things out of you like music or creation or redemption it can draw things out of me where it interacts with real life gives me places to learn and grow about people and understanding but ultimately like these types of movies are expressions of people's percep- perceptions of the world. They're expressions of what they see as valuable. They're teaching and growing and learning. And no, every movie has a message. Every movie has a message. And sometimes there are messages that I don't agree with. <laughs> and sometimes there are messages yeah. that I think we all need to be reminded of. Um, and I think there, there are great things that we can learn from most of these creations. And I don't think it's something that we always have to just take its face value. And I think it's something that we can always say, hey, um, you know what? We were made to create. We we serve a creator. <laughs> and it's cool to get to see and value movies mm. like this. Yeah. Not to over-spiritualize it, but at the same time, just be like, hey, I think it's really fun to laugh and have a good time and, and to say. Now, again, we said this in the last time. Yeah. 
yeah. uh, you know, put your list in there. We want yeah, to see yeah. them. If yeah. you don't the like, yeah, and for maybe sure. you disagree or you agree, then I'm a moron and you, might you say, side with uh, them. You know, and that please. who has the best list? <laughs> you might yeah. say who yeah. has the best list. We'll put them in there and uh, we'll see. What if, do we get if we win? Yeah. Um, Sonic five. drinks? I don't know. I'm down. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, I hope that this has been fun. I know that part one is a little longer if you stuck through that whole thing and that part two here has been hopefully just a quick like, hey, maybe you need one movie to check out. Um, any of our top four, any, any one of those uh, worthy of the. And in fact, yeah, I would say if you haven't seen the Lord of the Rings series, the extended editions, mm. this might be the only time that you have to watch it straight. That's true. <laughs> <In it>. Ever. <laughs> so just, just straight up. Um, so take advantage of that. Well, uh Hope you enjoyed, and we will be back uh, next week. I think we're diving into some, a new topic that's been given to us uh, through our comments and through text message, so that'll be a fun thing um, and should be coming out uh, hopefully soon. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much for being on, guys, and taking the yeah. time to – fun. I'm glad no, nobody got bloody and nope. we, <laughs> we made it through. <laughs> you guys have a great and glorious day in the Lord. We'll see you later.